Today, I'll be giving you guys the best settings, more FPS, better visual, better audio, and consistent aim. Let's get straight into it. In display, you want full screen. This is a must. Obviously, make sure it's your monitor, your GPU, make sure it's on the right GPU. This is going to be a big one. Make sure your screen refresh rate is on the right one. Like I have a 240 monitor. Sometimes it doesn't register, so you obviously want to check that. Aspect ratio on automatic. This is a huge one. V-Sync gameplay off. This is going to hurt your frames if you have it on. You can always do custom frame rate limited if you would like. This is good for like the menu. You don't want to override, overheat, overperform your PC just for sitting in the menu. Now the big one, quality. So make sure your resolution is usually on the 100 mark and it's on the right render resolution. For example, like I said, I have a 1440p monitor. Fidelity cast. This thing is a game changer. Nine day difference. I have mine on 100. This is basically going to make the quality super sharp, super clean. It does affect your FPS a little bit, but I think it's worth it. For anti-aliasing, we're going to have the Filmic SMMA2 T2X. And we're gonna have it on low video memory scale we have this on standard currently texture resolution low texture filter low nearby level, level details low this is level detail low short particle quality low particle quality level very low bullet impact and spray i like this on just because it, it it looks really cool when you see the shots and all that obviously this is gonna barely affect your fps you maybe lose five four three fps I think it's worth it. If you want extra FPS, I and mean, you can always turn it off. For shader quality, we're going to have this on low. Tessellation off, a big thing. This will de destroy your FPS. Make sure it's off. Terrain memory, you're going to have it on minimum. On demand, texture streaming off. Now, when you have this thing on, it can really affect your game. You know, it might crash more. You might lose some FPS. So I personally like this off. And again, we're trying to give you guys the best performance and obviously while still maintaining very good visual. For streaming quality, normal. Volumetric quality, low. Deferred faces quality, low. And a lot of these things are like stuff like water. Like who cares, right? You want better performance. Water uh, caustics, low. Shadow map resolution, very low. Screen space shadows off. Spot shack quality, low. Cache spot shadows on. Spot uh, cache low. Cache sun shadows on. So some of these settings I have on, it it's comes from Warzone. You know, these have been tested, you know, like something like cache spot shadows. When you have this on, it basically allows you to get more FPS, so it's always a plus. Particle lighting is another one of those settings, though. Even though it affects your GPU, it technically gives you frames. Uh, it helps a little bit with the frame section, so you always kind of want to have this normal or high. Ambient occlusion, have this off. Another FPS destroyer. If you put this on, you're going to be like, why is my FPS 50 left? Screen space reflections off. I have this weather grid and volumes off at the moment. NVIDIA low uh, latency on, depth of field off 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 and zero you want to make sure you have all these off off and zero for fov i have it on 120 imo you can do whatever you want it's a personal preference but higher fov is nice affected is pretty much a must if you're playing on a high fov weapon field of view wide so this is a new setting that was recently added into mw2 and basically you can change the fov of your actual weapon and i like it wide because it makes it smaller therefore there's less clutter on your screen right it doesn't block your screen as much small difference but it makes a difference and it looks cooler imo we got this on default and make sure these are both on 50 percent. this is the lowest you can go basically this is going to reduce the camera shake on your screen when you're shooting when there's explosive stuff like that which can make an impact on your visual recoil so you definitely want to have these low for audio we're going to have home theater master volume at 50 music volume zero no distractions dialogue volume on 70 so you can hear your in-game character FX volume on 100, hit marker volume on 90. I like it a little bit lower than the regular volume. Then obviously make sure it's on the right device in your in your computer. Something I will say is this game overall is slightly lower than Warzone and then Modern Warfare. So if you feel like this is still a little bit low, especially with the mix and home theater, you can definitely increase the master volume a little bit, but don't put it too high because it's going to be really bad. And then all of this, I mean, make sure you just have the right settings for your voice chat. And now for the last thing, we're going to talk about controller and just like aim settings in general. This is going to be a huge difference and basically lower your recoil which is a, always a plus i have this on flip we got controller vibration off i like to play on a lower sense i always recommend a lower sense because it's going to help your aim be more consistent and then stuff that you guys need to understand automatic sprint automatic tactical sprint is a plus it's so huge it's basically a cheat code you know pros have been calling it cheat code it just makes your movement so fluid and it doesn't require no effort so Automatic tactical sprint is always, almost always a must. Right now, you should have your reload behavior to tap to reload. But, in, you know, in the near future, when we play Warzone, you definitely want to put probably tap to interact. It makes things a lot more easier. For the advanced, we're going to have target aim assist on. Obviously, aim assist type, I like this default. I know people, some people have been messing with Black Ops. You could definitely try it, but I, I personally don't mind default right now. Aim response curve type dynamic, that's a must. ADS aim assist on, of course, if you're on controller. Make sure this is on one. Make sure this is on instant and make sure that's off. I mean, you can custom customize your sensitivity if you like presume it's a cool little setting but i personally don't prefer it this is a huge thing inputs dead zone so when you first get into this game 
if you do not go to the advanced tab and if you do not open up your dead zone you're controlling your aim is going to feel super weird it's going to throw you off you're going to be like what the hell is going on so you want to make sure you really mess with this so your left stick de minimum dead zone you usually want it very low because you can get away with it uh i have it on the lowest right now i mean the lowest is 0 0.00 but i have it on 0 0.01 right stick minimum this 0 0.05 is basically the default so that's what i have it on right now left stick max i have it on 0 0.8 this is basically gonna allow you as soon as you move or sprint it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be a little more responsive versus you have to wait to go all the way to the front so this is gonna basically register like 80 percent you're gonna be able to sprint right away and then right stick you want this on default 0 0.99 left trigger and right trigger this is like you want this on 0 0.00 but the way you know i have a battle beaver controller and a lot of customizable controllers if you just click them in i mean they're basically instant as it is grounded mantle off automatic airborne mantle partial and automatic ground mantle off so these this is really huge to uh mess around with because one this is going to allow you to slide or slide cancel a lot more fluid it's not going to mess up and jump randomly two auto mantling your random objects really do suck and it can cost you a lot of gunfights so lowering these down and making not as sensitive to just jumping on everything is going to definitely be a big thing you know so something you should know if you go to your interface settings and you go to telemetry here this people are probably under wondering how do you get the fps in a corner at first i was kind of confused too and it's a, it's a little bit hidden but you want to go to this setting and you want to go to show more and this is where you have the fps counter server latency uh pack loss and all the good stuff thank you guys for watching the video make sure to like comment subscribe it's much appreciated we're going to be doing more tip videos in the near future so you don't want to miss it have a good day guys